This is the bonding of alkene ligands. An alkene ligand clearly bonds to a transition metal. And all those examples that you've seen, very importantly, because this is one area where students do sometimes become confused, is that the alkene ligand is bonded side-on, like this. It is never seen bonded end-on. Now, if I was to say to you that an alkene ligand is a donor and an acceptor, what we need to do is we need to work out which orbitals are going to be involved in donation and which orbitals are going to be involved in accepting. So what are the interesting orbitals on an alkene ligand? So what we have, of course, is we have a pi orbital here. And the other one that we have that's of interest to us is, well, it's pi star. Now what we will have is exactly the same transition metal orbitals that we have looked at for carbon monoxide and we've looked at for phosphenes. So we have an unoccupied orbital which is lying in this plane here. Exactly the same way we have our unoccupied orbital laying in this plane, which if we're looking at an octahedral environment will be the EG, one of the EG set. And of course we have an occupied orbital which is laying with this geometry. So what you get in the bonding of a transition metal to an alkene ligand is a donor interaction with this occupied orbital going into the vacant orbital like that and you have an acceptor interaction where electron density is flowing from the metal into the pi star orbital. And so you can see here the temptation is for students to take this and bond it end on because that's the way the CO and you can do the acceptor interaction if you do that but if your alkene is bonded end on it is not going to be possible to have a donor interaction. So uh, alkene ligand bonds face on because only by bonding face on can you have an acceptor and a donor interaction in these species. So those are the interactions that are important. If we're being really strict about this, what is the symmetry of this interaction with respect to the metal ligand axis? Well, it's a sigma interaction, isn't it? So this is a sigma interaction. Now what does it say here? It says that an alkene is a pi donor. Pi donors are ligands that donate electron density to the metal with pi symmetry. This is a pi donor in the sense that it is donating pi electron density to the metal. But the symmetry of the bond is sigma. I hope that doesn't muddy things too much, but it's worth explaining for those of you who say to me, well, that's not a pi donor interaction in the sense that we've seen them before. No, it's not. It has sigma donor, uh, sigma symmetry, but it is donation of pi electrons into a vacant orbital. Here we have no such issues. These are obviously pi star orbitals, and this is pi symmetry with respect to the metal ligand axis. If we're having donation of the alkene electrons to the d orbital, that does very little to the alkene bond. Okay? Does very, very little to the alkene bond. Doesn't weaken it, doesn't change it very much at all. However, if you've got back donation of electron density from the metal into a pi star orbital. You know all about this. What is that going to do to the metal, sorry, to the carbon carbon bond? If you donate into its antibonding orbitals, what are you doing to the carbon carbon bond? You're stretching it, you are weakening it, you are basically moving towards a situation where you no longer have a carbon carbon double bond, but you have a carbon carbon single bond. And similarly, you're moving from a situation where if we draw it as a perfect alkene, you have an sp2 hybridized carbon atom, you're moving towards an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So you expect a couple of major effects to happen in the structure. You expect the carbon-carbon bond to increase in length, and you expect the angles around the carbon atoms to move from 120 degrees towards 109.5 degrees. And that's what you get. You find a, a range of situations where your alkene ligand, which is always a two-electron donor, sometimes your alkene ligand is bonded just like it's bonded to an alkene. So it's mostly a donor interaction. In the extreme situation, where you have a lot of back bonding to the metal, then it's not so much like a donor interaction at all. It becomes like two sigma bonds 
to the extreme ends of your alkene and under those circumstances where you've got extensive back donation of electron density you break the carbon-carbon double bond and you make a metallocycle.